Is it baby stag junior or is it just really high proof bottom shelf whiskey? That's the question today as we review benchmark foolproof. So let's get to it. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Bourbon Hutch and thanks so much for joining me on this journey through the world of whiskey. So today we are looking at a bottle that has caused a little bit of stir in the whiskey community at large and on the whiskey tube community as well. And that is Benchmark Foolproof. So Buffalo Trace owns the entire Benchmark line and it is their, admittedly their lower tier bottom shelf line. But recently they sort of revamped the whole experience and came out with a whole slew of new products, including the top floor benchmark, the bottled and bond benchmark, there's a single barrel offering, and there is this foolproof offering. Now the question surrounding this bottle is essentially, since it comes from the same mash bill, mash bill one from Buffalo Trace as products like Stag Jr., is it really on that level? Could it possibly be baby Stag Jr. at 125 proof? So we're here to investigate that a little bit. Now, admittedly, this is a $23 bottle of whiskey and probably not as old as Stag Jr. So the likelihood of it really standing up to that kind of greatness, not very high, but is it a really solid option? That's kind of what I want to ask today. Is it, is it really a solid bottom shelfer at a high proof? So let's get into the nose, palette, and finish and evaluate benchmark foolproof. Before we get into it, did just want to ask a quick favor, and that's if you're liking the video, hit that like button. If you're liking all the content coming out of the channel, please hit that subscribe button really trying to grow the channel and this helps me know what kind of specific content to keep creating for you guys. All right, all that being said, let's get into the nose palette and finish here. On the nose, it is very sweet. So I've never had a pour of Stag Jr., never owned a bottle, but I've heard a lot about how rich and sweet it is. And this does have a good sweetness. The best note I can think of is like grape bubble gum. So a lot of Buffalo Trace products sort of have this grape note for me, grape and cherry, and this has that presence, but it's like so sweet, like confectionery sugars and bubble gum sort of sweetness, cotton candy kind of sweetness. And I guess underneath that, there is some caramel and vanilla and cherry a little bit, but overall a sort of cloyingly sweet nose, prominent nose, lots of flavor, but honestly for me, it's almost bordering on too sweet, too processed for sure. Well, let's get into the palette and try that out. Cheers, everybody. Interesting, okay. So on the palette, it goes a little bit darker than what the nose shows off. Um, there's more caramel, there's more brown sugar notes, and there's even like a peanut shell, peanut butter kind of note in there. And then wrapped around all of that is that bubblegum cotton candy sweetness. To be honest, it's not my favorite um, based on that sip. I'm not sure I like how the peanut and brown sugar are playing with that more candy sweetness. It's a little bit incoherent. They don't necessarily mix very well for me. And the other thing I will say about this whiskey is that it, to me, it drinks hot, like not 125 proof, like hotter than that. Real ethanol presence to it, especially on that first sip. But let's go into the second sip, see if more flavors sort of jump out and if it's sort of mellowed out a little bit on the palate. Well, cheers, everybody. Yeah, again, it's just those prominent like peanut. There's a chocolate that came out on that second sip, but this peanut chocolate side, which is trying to go darker. And then this cotton candy, grape, bubblegummy sweetness, trying to go really light and fluffy and airy and they kind of try to mix together, but don't fully marry, in my opinion. Um, and second sip was still significantly hot on my palate, for sure. 
Let's go back in for one last sip and really focus on the finish there. I did notice on that second sip that it's got a, a decently long finish. So let's go in and focus in on the flavors there. Cheers, everybody. Okay, so there on the third sip, it is a little bit tamer. The heat has sort of calmed down a little bit and I could pick out more flavors and sort of enjoy the experience a little bit more. Focusing on the finish there, the bubblegum sweetness is what dominates the finish in my opinion. There is a good sort of chocolate note and some good baking spices and maybe even a little barrel char and oak that kind of linger. But overall that bubblegum sweetness is sort of what carries over from the nose to even the mid palate all the way to the finish. And then throughout the rest of it, there is this like cherry and peanut and chocolate and darker caramel side of things that is also present. So overall, how would I evaluate Benchmark Foolproof? Well, I'd say it's a $23 whiskey and it is packed full of flavor. Each and every one of the flavors here is um, powerful. There is no lacking in flavor. You know, the heat and ethanol is there, but so is some prominent caramel and peanut and chocolate. And so is that bubblegum cotton candy sweetness. It's all powerful and in your face. And that's just a good experience to be able to have for $23 and a bottom shelf whiskey. The 125 proof certainly elevates that. Um, it does taste a little younger. It is hot and a little jagged at times. And in my opinion, that mix of flavors is sort of competing rather than cohering together. And that's probably mostly just a quality of being a little bit younger and the heat is sort of overpowering some things and it hasn't had so much time to mellow out and congeal and come together as a cohesive whiskey. So a powerful, flavorful experience, but one that I think is just a little bit all over the place and not my particular favorite combination of flavors. So that leads to the final analysis and the question, is this a Hutch-worthy bottle? My answer for this one is a little bit complicated, but ultimately I'd say probably no. Um, it's certainly nice to have one bottle of it. Happy that I bought it. Cheap whiskey for sure but it's not something that I feel like I need to go out and replace or a flavor profile that I feel like I have to have at my disposal at all times. Good one, interesting one to try, but not necessarily my favorite bottle. All right, all that being said, let me know in the comments below what you think of Benchmark Foolproof and even the whole Benchmark line. If there's anything else from the Benchmark line you think I should try, comment that down below as well. And until I see you guys again for another video, all I can say is, Keep drinking good whiskey and cheers.